Hello, Rachel here. Welcome to my Slow TV Stitchery. Well, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, the eagle eye will notice that I've now filled in um, Nefertiti's skirt. So the blue has been taken out and it's been replaced with white. Um, when I look at it very closely it's a little bit uneven but I'm expecting to add some stitching and I think that will camouflage any doubtful bits quite nicely. So now I need to work out where I've got to. So I need that needle way out there. And that one has done its stitching. It's not quite as cold today. Only the elastic mittens, not the woolly ones. Which is a good thing because the elastic mittens don't shed and sometimes the woolly ones do. It's still a bit on the chilly side though. My glasses are steaming up. just because of the proximity of my body heat. I must admit, I get so tangled in these vertical, these, sorry, horizontal sections of border that I'll be very glad when I've got to the edge and it's as it is at the top and I only have to go through a few coloured sections at once. those who are interested, the music in the background at the moment is from a CD of a set of quartets by a lady called Madalena lombardini Sirman, who was a contemporary of Haydn and they are played by the Allegri String Quartet. I think I'm over halfway now. Quite a long way over halfway, perhaps. And I'm beginning to try to work out how I'm going to mount and display this piece. I don't like mounting embroidery behind glass if I can avoid it. Um, it loses some of its power even though of course it's 
better protected from dust and grime and atmosphere in general. So mounting it in a frame behind glass is very much my last option if I can't do better. gives me an interesting challenge. like I need to make everything slightly longer to get the right balance um, so I need at least another two rounds of colour on this bottom border contrary to the um, appearance of the underdrawing I'm also thinking about the stool that Akhenaten is sitting on in comparison with what I'm doing with Nefertiti's and thinking that might be something else to be possibly even taken out and redone. I might be able to do something more interesting with it without actually taking out what's there. Not sure. For something which I spent so much time on the early stages of planning, I've had a lot of false starts with this piece. Um, I'm not sure that I can think of any way that I could have avoided them. I certainly need to think about that a little more because for example um, there were very few false starts with um, the head of Anx and Spartan, which really was barely planned at all. And not many with either the head of Nefertiti with the silk and gold or the Colossus of Akhenaten. That did have one or two pauses but I was able to avoid too much unpicking in the end. So when you consider how much planning I did for this one, it's a little galling that 
so many elements of it haven't quite turned out right first time. So, as I said, I have to think about that have to find a way of thinking about it. If I seem more than usually silent through this section, it's because I feel it demands quite a lot of concentration, because I am forever changing needles. Very hard to maintain. A train of thought. when the train of stitching is so interrupted. And of course needles that unthread themselves aren't helping. That however I think is getting short enough. I can get that out. If I can keep that threaded just for this one section. I will have to add some more stitches later. But
So I'm coming to another interesting part here. I just put a couple of stitches in here because this thread is pretty much at an end. see that Nefertiti's legs are absolutely not right. Um, I started following my drawing with the feet and decided that it was so wrong, so unfoot-like and so in particular unlike Akhenaten's feet that I needed to think again. So what I've decided to do is do little stick legs and then when I can see the whole thing, when the gold is in place and I have my basis, I'm going to go back and do the feet a little bit more believably, working forward from the ankle, which I think will work significantly better for me than trying to do it as I go. Now, the disadvantage of that is that this bit where the feet are going to be is actually completely untethered at the moment. Um, which I'm a little anxious about. But that seems to be the way of it. So I'm just going to hope for the best. I can tether this bit, although again I have a turquoise section to start here and I'm not sure that I'm in quite a good place to start. I think probably when I'm on my next round I'll have enough that I can start that. I think I've said before that the very outermost point of a shape is a very difficult place to get right in Ornure because when you're coming into it because your placement is constrained by the gold thread that you're stitching over and yet if you get the outer outline wrong in any way um, it can completely ruin the effect that you've got from getting everything else right. So, I've been evolving more with this than I had to with either of the others. Um, both of my previous Ornues were actually very much simpler than this. Um, in the case of Christus Natus Est, um, mostly I started 
the, the shapes weren't quite so critical because the, it was inspired by a semi-abstract painting of my mother's. Um, the absolute shapes weren't as critical as they are here. Um, there were renditions of figures, but they were really as curving segments. Whereas these have to look like believable people. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed following along. Happy stitching!